Hi, it's Amy from Winterwood Studio, and I realized after I did the watercolor video that I didn't show you any of the fine liners or inks or dip pens or colored pencils that I use with the watercolor supplies. And I almost never use just watercolor. I almost always <laughs> use the inks or the colored pencils or both or sometimes wash too. Um, to make my artwork when I use watercolor. I tend to be more of a mixed media artist, so I thought, why don't you come on in and I'll show you all of my favorite non-watercolor watercolor supplies. <laughs> all right, so let's come on in and get talking. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you are all my dip pens, um, and I keep them in this little box. I've had it since I was 14, so it's pretty old now. It was, I think, a Christmas present way back when. Um, and this this ink is all dried up now, um, but I like the bottle, so I like to keep it in there. It came, I think, as a set way back when I was young. Um, so, let's see. So, this right here, I just got a replacement one, is one of my favorite pen holders. I don't know if it's going to focus. It's hard to focus on those gold letters. There we go. And I'll link these below. I, I don't know how to say it. I'm not going to butcher it. Um... These you can get in a little kit with all these little nibs too. So if you've never used a dip pen, I think it's crazy and expensive too, like um, $8 or something. So if you've never used a dip pen before, this is a good way to get started. Um, and then you can start buying nibs from companies. Um, when you find ones you like. Um, I think I generally like the Nico and the G's are the ones that I like the most. Um, and then I just have like some other holders in here. I don't know why there's a paintbrush in here. Um, this is the speedball holder I think that you can buy at like Walmart and Michaels. Um, and then I also have this glass dip pen, which is really beautiful, but a little scratchy to use. Um, and then a lot of these nibs just came with this set. I don't generally use those. The ones that have ink on it are the ones I use. This is a spoon nib. I use this kind a lot. Um, oh, G. Nico's the brand. Nico G. Right there. So that is what I like the best. All right, so I'll drop that down below with links to that so you can get your own if you wanna try it. And then we will quick look at my bottles of ink and then all of my colored pencils. Okay, so if you want a true water, waterproof ink to do your inking first and then go over it with watercolor, you're gonna want, um, in India ink. I think this is, yep, just the Blick brand India ink. And this is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay Black India ink. And these are both probably my favorite for inking. So if you want a true waterproof ink, these are the inks to use. Um, if you want to do your inking first and then go over it with watercolor or any water media, this is what you want to use. Um, none of these, I've done multiple tests with these, and all of these will bleed to some extent. Eh, I can't remember if the acrylic inks do or not. I'd have to pull out my skin. You know what, I'll pull it out. And so, in this book right here, I did some testing of my inks back here in the back. So, here's my ink test page. Here, let's pull another light over. It's getting a little dark in here. It's snowing again real hard. <laughs> Seems like we can't get a break from the snow lately. This is my ink test page. These are all the inks that I have, including my fine liners, which we'll get to in a minute. And let's see if you can see that. So what I did was, this is alcohol ink. I was te testing it with Copic markers. Here I was testing it with water. So um, the platinum carbon black ink, which I don't think I have here. I'm missing some of my inks. Okay, I'm back with all the inks now. So, if you look here, the Platinum Carbon Black was all right. It had a little bit of bleeding. The Platinum Khaki Black ink definitely bled. The Bombay Brown 
uh, wasn't too bad. I, I would probably use that if I wasn't too worried about it. Um, the Daler Rowney Acrylic Ink and Sepia bled a little bit. The Noodler's Ink in Golden Brown, which is the one I really wanted, bled horribly. <laughs> As did the Parker Quink Ink, which is my favorite for um, writing with. The Blick one was fine. It looks to me like the acrylic inks are fine too. So the acrylic inks, the Dollar Rowney FW acrylic inks are fine. And then all of my fine liners were fine. These down here were some other things I was testing. So out of these inks, let's see. So we have the two that I showed you, the India inks, those were good. And then this one, this one, So these ones were all okay for doing with acrylic over them too, as well. As long as you, and that's the key, you have to let them dry for a good 24 hours before you try to go over it with water. So these are all good too. Um, these, these, I was looking for a brown that, I just really love this brown, um, but it, it, and this one too, both nice browns, but both of them bled quite a bit. So if you wanted to use these browns, you would have to use them after you watercolored. So you do your watercolor and then your ink work after, which is not generally how I like to work. work. But they're still beautiful inks. Okay, so now we're on to my favorite, one of my most favorite art supplies of all, and also one that I love to use with my watercolor, and that is colored pencils. So the first full set of colored pencils I got was the Prismacolor Premier. This is the full set, 150 colors. They're rich, they're creamy, they're beautiful, they're vibrant, but if you know me, you probably already know what my problem with these were. <laughs> I talk about it and talk about it. It's the whole light fastness thing again. Um, a lot of these are not light fast, unfortunately. They're just beautiful and they're gorgeous to work with and I love to use them, but a lot of the, like I think it's less than half are light fast. Um, they're a really beautiful pencil. I will still use the light fast ones um, when I'm doing a project, if I need one, I'll still reach for them. Um, and if I'm doing something that's going to be in a sketchbook or not exposed to light, I'll still use them because they're really a joy to work with. They're so beautiful and creamy and thick. Um, but that light fastness, that's a sticking point for me. So after, after these, I will show you what I moved on to next. And that is the Faber Castell Castile Castell Polychromos colored pencils. And this is again the whole 120 set. And again, they're not in order. These I use pretty regularly. Um, when a color gets used up, I replace it and put it back in the set so that they're always all here and in the tin, unless I have a couple out because I'm working on a project. Um, but it's three trays of color. And most of these are light fast. And one of the things I really, maybe not most, maybe like two thirds. But one of the things I like about these are that, if it'll focus, those little stars there on the end, that's the light fast radian. So this pencil has a three. Um, let's see if we can find a higher. That's a three, three. So I will use anything that's a three and up. If it's a below a three, I won't use it. Like this one here is a two. And you can I don't think I've ever even used it. Um, but these, I think, go all the way up to five, if I remember correctly, on their light fast rating. This is a two. You can see this one's never been used. Brand new, still. Never used. Um, this one's a two, and this is a two, and this is a two, and this is a two, and that, my friends, is why I've started to move on to, I bet you can guess it, if you know anything about colored pencils. Yep. <laughs> it says it right on the box. The highest light fastness. 
<laughs> I'm a stickler. <laughs> I don't have a lot of these. These are pricey. This is all I've got so far right now. And I think a handful that I've bought for projects. I'll check in a minute. This is the portrait set. And again, the same with these. When I use one up, I buy a replacement and put it back in. I like to keep my things together and organized as best I can. And this, I think, was just their 12 set right there. And then, let me check. I guess I have more than I thought. <laughs> these are the ones that I've purchased separately. I have a small wooden drawer set that my dad made for me. He's a woodworker too, like my husband. Um, and I keep these in there. So these are the other colors that I have here. I'm slowly working on building up a set of these. If I ever made enough money, I'd love to have the whole big box tin, whatever they come in, like the polychromos and the Prismacolor, but alas, they're very expensive. <laughs> so this is what I have for now. And um, these combine the best of the Prismacolor and the um, polychromos together. These are soft, they're creamy, they blend well, they're just a joy to work with. Very expensive, very, very, very expensive. <laughs> The polychromos, too, are um, a little harder and firmer, and they're really good for details, too. So, like, these, it can be hard to get them sharpened to a point and keep them in a point um, because they're so soft. It can be really hard to get, like, you know, say, the reflection in an eye just right. So uh, that's something the polychromos are excellent for. They hold a point and keep it well. So if you're doing, like, fur detailing or itty-bitty areas, polychromos are great for that. So, oh, one more thing, the fine liners. I gotta show you the fine liners I use and then I'm done. I should have done them before the pencils and after the ink. Maybe I can switch it around. <laughs> so then my next favorite supply are the Pigma Micron pens. I have them in sepia, black, and blue in every size they make. This is just a small handful of all of them I probably have like 25, 30. Um, these are my absolute favorite if I'm not using a dip pen to use with watercolor. They do not bleed, they do not smear. Um, the only thing is I wish that they were refillable like Copics because the points, like this one right here, this one's all used up. I need a replacement for this. The felt tip is almost totally worn away. Um, and that'll happen on your finer ones first. So. You can't replace them. It's a little bit wasteful to buy new ones all the time, um, which is a bit of a bummer. I have tried some other brands of fine liners. I just don't like them as much as I like these. I have the Copic ones. I think I have the Winsor & Newton ones. And I think I have the Prismacolor ones, too. I'm pretty sure. And then this I use and love. I go through a bunch of these. This is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. Um... This is waterproof. I don't know if it's India ink or not. It's got a huge tip. I go through lots of these. Lots. <laughs> I love those. And then the other thing I forgot to show, and this is again just a handful, is I will often use the uh, Prismacolor Color Erase. Color Erase, I guess they're called. Color Erase. Um, colored pencils for, this is not one. That's a drawing pencil. For um, sketching under watercolors. Uh, they don't muddy the watercolor the way the graphite does, although I do have a tip for that, and I'll share that in one of my videos, but um, I like to sketch with these under the watercolors a lot uh, so that they don't muddy the watercolors. So those are all the supplies that I like to use with my watercolors, um, and thank you for being here with me today. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit like. If I manage to save $30,000, my husband said that he would build me a new art studio and you guys could come along for the ride. So if, if you haven't subscribed, I'm really close to being able to monetize. It would be awesome if I could get there and start saving some money. Um, and thank you again, everybody, for joining me on my journey and being so warm and supportive and welcoming and giving me so many tips and wonderful advice. It's really, YouTube's become my happy place. It's really been 
just a joy to meet all of you and hear your comments and suggestions and know I'm not the only one out there who deals with chronic illnesses. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to everybody who's left a comment or shared something with me. I really, truly do appreciate it. Thank you for being there for me. And I will hopefully be there for you as well. Hopefully we can do this crazy ride of life together and be there for each other and form a nice little community. I would really like that. Um, so... Everybody, go make something. Go create something. Find some joy in your art supplies. Just go look at your colored pencils if you have them. You don't even have to do art. Just look at your supplies. It, it'll make you happy. I promise. So I will see you next time. And until then, happy creating.